Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to read out of Psalms 150. It says, Praise the Lord, praise God in His sanctuary, praise Him in His mighty firmament, praise Him for His mighty acts. If you needed a reason to dance, here's your reason. For what He did, for what He's done, right? Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the timbrel and dance. <laughs> Anybody got their jig on tonight? Anybody been obedient? I've seen a few people. Praise Him with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Well, if your eardrums were split tonight, then you were being biblical. You were obedient to the Word. Because that's what the Word, what the Hebrew words mean. Ear-splitting sound. <laughs> I think John's got that nailed down. Glory to God. I don't think we have to worry about anything like that. But give yourself a hand clap. You were biblical tonight. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to do in heaven. What do you think you're going to do in heaven? That's what you're going to do in heaven? What are you going to do in heaven? There's going to be thousands and thousands and millions and millions of people praising God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're amazing. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're glorifying you for what you've done. You've done things that are amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what's not going to be in heaven? You know what's not going to be there? Self-consciousness. Embarrassment. That's not going to be there. You're going to be 100% free. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> that way I don't have to come up here and make a fool out of myself. huh? <laughs> How many are fools for Jesus? How many want to be? Well, if you're not ready to do it here, are you going to do it out there? Probably not. Probably not. If you're not willing to do it where it's a safe place, uh, where people won't judge you, where people won't get on your case, and you have the freedom to do it, will you really be a fool for Him out there? Just some food for thought for you all to chew on a little bit. I'm not trying to get on your case. I'm just trying to encourage you that, you know what? Glory to God. Let the saints be joyful. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Anybody done that lately? <laughs> Anybody sing loud in your bed lately? That's being biblical. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. A two-edged sword in their hand. Glory to God. To execute vengeance on the nations. Punishments on the peoples. To bind the kings with chains. Their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Sounds like, sounds like your world changers. Amen. And we understand that things are done in the spiritual. There's a spiritual war first. Glory to God. You take care of things on that level before you take care of anything in the, in the natural or the physical level. But glory to God, we have the authority to, to do what he's telling us to do. Psalm isn't a suggestion. These things were sung by his children. These, these, uh, these songs, which we now call psalm, psalms, were sung and danced to and worshiped and spoken back to the Lord. I, I'm, I'm glad for psalm. You can't really be depressed and read psalms. Let's try, let, let's try an exercise. I've been told by some people that you can't shout and doubt at the same time. Have you ever tried it? You know, doubts come and your mouth's quiet and you're not saying anything, right? But try to doubt while you're shouting. Anybody ever tried that? Oh, I'm just going to be depressed. And, and try to shout while you're trying to be depressed. It's kind of not possible. 
right? You get to shouting, you get to shouting glory to God, hallelujah, you can't doubt. Hallelujah! Woo! Try that exercise. You can't help but laugh, right? You start shouting, you start laughing. You're excited. You're going, hey, you know what? By my circuit, I, I guess something changed. And what changed was you. <laughs> right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Well, some of you are looking at me like, man, he's lost his marbles. And I guess if you think I lost my marbles, that's with you. Because I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. I, I'm sane. I, I'm, I'm I, you know what? I'm full of the Holy Spirit and power. I'm of a sound mind. Yes, I am. I haven't lost my marbles. I simply, you know, at some point in our lives, there is shackles that we got to break through. And I'm encouraging you to break through those shackles. And you may not have even known you had them. There's times we don't know we had them. And we have to step out of that and say, you know what? I'm going to look foolish like David was willing to look foolish in front of his wife and in front of his servants and in front of all Israel and dance with all of his might because he knew God did something for him that was absolutely amazing. I'm a David. I'm going to be a David. I'm going to be a shouter. I'm not going to be a doubter. I'm going to praise him with loud cymbals. I'm going to praise Him with loud music. Glory to God. Because I'm going to be obedient to what the Word tells me to do. Hallelujah! I didn't quite get it like Bob says it. Hallelujah! There we go. That was better. Shake somebody's hand and say thank you for coming to Church of the Word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I was just informed of some wonderful news. I was informed of some wonderful news. We have Pastor Billy. Uh, where are you from, Pastor Billy? Uganda? You're from Uganda. And he said, thank you. Thank you for your worship. He's like, it's African style. <laughs> Glory to God. You're welcome here, brother. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's good to have you here, another pastor in the house. Um, I trust you're going to receive some wonderful things from Jesus tonight. And, um, you know, direction. Uh, one of the things that's so, so crucial is uh, being led by the Holy Spirit and hearing His voice accurately. How many have been told by somebody in your lifespan, Oh, God said, and then about, I don't know, a day later, God no longer said, <laughs> or maybe it was an hour, right? We've probably all experienced it, and, and I want to hear the Lord accurately. My desire is to hear uh, more accurately than I did before, and to be able to do what He's asked me to do, to follow the calling, because I want to press forward, uh, because there's a mark that I want to hit uh, there's a mark that I want to press into. There's a mark that God has for me because there's going to be a day I'm going to stand in front of the Almighty and, and I'm going to give an account of how I've lived my life. And I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And I trust every one of you wants to hear the same thing, that you can stand before God and He can look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant, Ron. Well done. You did amazing. You hit the mark. You did what I asked you to do. Sometimes those things aren't the most joyful thing. Right? It's not, we, we don't always feel like having joy, but we can always be joyful. <laughs> we don't always feel like being full of joy, but we can always be joyful in Jesus because He has something that is so much more amazing than what we have. Thank you, Lord. Well, let's... Um, Let's go to 2 Corinthians. We're going to lift up an offering tonight. 
Glory to God. It's, uh, and I, I'm, I won't keep you long. I want to turn it over to Prophet Bob and the prophetic word that he carries. Second Corinthians eight or nine, and I'm going to look in verse ten here. And you know, I've I've come to places in my life where the Lord's asked me to sow or to give, and I'm just like, Lord, why is it always the wrong time? <laughs> Anybody else ever have those thoughts? Like, you know, maybe a month from now would be a good time, but right now is just come on, Lord, you got the timing kind of mixed up. Why don't you ask me to give when, when I got, when, when you know, there's uh, maybe an overabundance uh, and I know it and I feel it. And it's like the Lord will ask me to give uh, some, uh, into somebody's life and it just, it, it, and I've had to deal with this and it felt kind of like taking, right? But the Lord's asking me and I want to be obedient to Him. My heart's right, but there's things in my heart that I still don't understand about my Father because He knows all things. Well, here in verse 10 it says, Now may He who supplies seed to the sower. If the Lord asks you to give, He will supply the seed. See, you can fa fasten your faith. Like I, I, Because I, I felt that the Lord was trying to take from me because I didn't understand that He's a good, good Father and He actually wants to bless me. And He's asking me to give so that he actually He can bless. You know, He's asking me to give something up so He can get something to me. And so when the Lord asked me to give... Uh, things that and I'm not quite ready or I'm not quite sure or it's stretching my box, then I go back to this verse and I say, thank you, Lord. You give seed to the sower. Isn't that cool? So if the Lord asks you to do something and to sow a seed, to sow finances, this is what this chapter is talking about, to sow money into, into people's lives. Men give unto men, right? I, I had a hard time grappling that. You know, I used to well, I'm going to believe by faith, and I kind of expected to open the door one day, and there'd just be brick from heaven laying right outside there. You know, there's that, you know, the streets are of gold, and I just figured there'd be a little chunk of gold from heaven sitting there for me. And then I realized, that no, actually, that's not how the giving deal works. It's men giving to men. It's men giving to another, it's a man giving to another man. Be under the direction of the Lord. Right? This is how the kingdom works. This is how His kingdom works. That's why you can have uh, every need met. Right, And in Acts it actually talks about uh, some were very, very wealthy at the time, some were very, very poor at the time, but it said that they had no lack. They had no lack because people gave to each other. People were giving. But it wasn't that the rich people gave everything away and didn't have any more. No, he, he's asking us to give so that there's actually a receiving. And sometimes we have the mind block. We don't receive well. So here's your promise. I just want to point this out. As you give a seed, and, and he will give you seed to the sower, bread for food. And then it says he'll supply and multiply the seed you have sown. Isn't that cool? So if he gives you the seed, God's so amazing that he gives you the seed and then he'll multiply your seed. He gives you the seed and then he multiplies the seed for you. So what are you doing? You just got to be willing to give. You just got to be willing to be the pipeline that things travel through. And, and a lot of times... We want to be the, the pool or the pond or the lake. Uh, and a lot of us, if we're really honest with us, we're kind of like the Dead Sea. Things flow in and nothing flows out. And we got to change our concept. No, 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 we're not dead. We're alive and we're givers. And we want to give into His kingdom because He's going to provide seed for us and He's also going to provide... Uh, and multiply the seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. See, when you start having this happen in your life where God gives you the seed, then he multiplies the seed, it'll bring up a, a thanksgiving in you like you've never experienced in your life. 
Now, a lot of us have been taught to work hard and be smart with our money, and sometimes that works against us. And sometimes that's counterintuitive the way the Lord wants because then we'll look at the wind and we'll look at the, uh, the waves and we won't sow. And like Ecclesiastes says, we won't cast our bread on the waters because we look at the, the clouds and it's like, well, it's not a good time to sow right now because... It's going to rain. That's what the farmer thinks. Well, a lot of times God asks us to give a seed. We're like, well, you know, right now is not a great time, Lord, because we've got to buy groceries. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. There's other things we need the money for. Now is not a good time to sow, but he wants you to sow so that he can multiply what you sow. And that's what's amazing. And then you, you sit back and go, wow, God. And you can't go boasting about your abilities and what you did and how amazing and how smart you are and how hard you worked and, and you did made all the right moves and made all the right decisions and that's why you were increased. You say, you know what? I was increased by the Lord. I was increased by the Lord. Amen? He'll multiply your seed. That's why it's important to give so that he can multiply your seed. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Let's pass the offering, and we'll stand to our feet, and we'll pray over it. And part of the reason we stand and we lift up the offering and the offering envelope that you have, part of that is now we release our faith by speaking, and I want to pray over this offering, and we re release that faith because without a release of faith, it's just a work. And I don't want it to be just a work. I want you to release your faith. <clears throat> so I just declare, Father, over this offering, and I thank you for the promise that is here in your word, that every seed that's sown tonight, you multiply it. You bring it back to us. You turn it around. It is your multiplication. It's the way you've designed it, that as we sow, we will also reap. And the reason we reap is so we can sow more. And Father, I thank you so much that we have so many places to... Uh, that we can put seed into the ground. But Father, I want to thank you that tonight the seed that's going into this ground goes all over the world. And Father, we thank you for being able to be part of, of the gospel being preached in, in the Philippines, the gospel being preached in the Ukraine, the gospel being preached in many different places because your seed is sown all over the world. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, some of you have, have met Bob before. Some of you haven't. Uh, Bob's been very much a uh, spiritual leader in my uh, life, a father in many ways. A lot of ways he doesn't even know or understand. And there's lots of things I'd catch. And a lot of times I'd catch things at our yearly landmark. And we'd come to the landmark because we always went to those. Um, a lot of people went on vacation, sat on the beach, and, and, and you know, we went to Disneyland and all these things. And, and we kind of, I don't know, when we got spirit-filled, we got so fired up about God that uh, our vacation, we went to conferences. Now, maybe that's boring to you, but it was exciting to us because we needed a week of refreshment. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to go on vacation. That is not what I'm saying. That is just where our priorities needed to be, and we had some, at the time, some limited funding, and so we chose to put our funds there. And we would go every year, and, and sometimes Kim would go with me, sometimes the children would come. Lots of times I went by myself because I needed to receive from heaven. And in those times, there's been uh, multiple times we have what we call the prophetic uh, presbytery uh, time, and we'd get in there and pray in the Holy Spirit, and there'd be prophetic words spoken. And there was some things spoken over me that were just absolutely amazing and life-changing. And there was so many times Kim and I felt like quitting. We felt like giving up. We, we, we felt like throwing in the towel. I mean, who starts churches in Olathe, Colorado, anywhere? I could think of a thousand better places to start a church. And, and I mean, who would, who would do it in Olathe? That's where we started. And then the Lord directed us to Delta. And, and so we kind of went through those times, and, and they weren't always fun. There was times we, we uh, you know, but the Lord wouldn't let us quit. I remember going to 
uh, a, a cheer in Grand Junction. And on the way home, I just presented it to Kim. I said, let's just close the doors and go to that church. Yeah. And it just got all quiet in the car for a couple miles. <laughs> and uh, I finally looked over at her, and she's looking at me. And we're like, no, we can't. That is not what we're supposed to do. <laughs> But I, the reason I'm saying this is that there was so much encouragement ministered to me through some of those prophetic times. And that's why we have uh, Brother Bob, Prophet Bob here because of the prophetic that he ministers in. Because it, there was things tweaked and changed and rearranged in mm. us on a yearly basis. Yeah. And yeah. now 12 years later, wow. 12 it's years. like, it's been 12 years. Wow. Man. Wow. wow. And, 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 and there's, there's, there can be a grounding that we got. And, and a lot yeah. of it, I just watched him, let him lay hands on me, and things would change and rearrange and shift. Hmm. And a year later, we were on another level. Hmm. And a year after that, we'd get to another level. And, 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 and those were landmarks in my life. Wow. And I'm so thankful for that. Thank so, Bob, I'm expecting that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> some shifting, changing, and rearranging <laughs> for some of you that you can catch some things and things you can be forever changed. Amen? Thank you, Pastor. The reason uh, he was able to shift and change actually John the Baptist said, repent and be rearranged by the Spirit of God is exactly what we've talked about these last few nights because of their hearts being totally given over to the Lord. And understand that you and I live in a, a time and a season when we have an opportunity and that is a choice. He, the Bible tells you and me that he set before us life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he says, now you choose life. God's not pushing it on you. He's trying to offer it to you so that you will willingly open up your heart to the fullest degree so that he can do in you and in us as the body of Christ what needs to be done so that we are equipped and we grow up to a level of maturity where we're not being deceived, where we're not being led, led astray, but we've come to the place where we have, have an intimate lifestyle with the Holy Spirit. And He leads us, He guides us, He directs us into all truth. Well, Jesus said you'd know this truth, and that truth would do what to you? Well, when you're free, I want you to know you're free of yourself. You never looked at it that way, did you, huh? See, you're, the, the biggest problem in any one of our lives is the one you look at in the mirror. Boy, I'll get a lot of amens and shouts and you, you, uh, you, hallelujah! Because your flesh is no different than mine, and I guarantee you, it's got to die. Paul said, I'm crucified. You know what that looks like? That's a bloody mess. You understand me? Well, I want you to understand there's new blood for every one of us. It's called the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that you've been engrafted into the right family when you receive Jesus Christ. I want you to know you come out of darkness in the light for such a time as this. I want you to know that you and I are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I want you to know that God is for you. He's not against you. Pastor Billy, is that your name, sir? I, the, the Lord spoke to me. He said, he said, just tell him that there's new doors of favor that are opening up for you. There's things that used to be difficult and hard to push through. All of a sudden, you're going to go through the threshold of extreme favor, and you're going to find that there's divine connections that are going to bring in a supply that you've never seen in the past because this is a new day and a new hour because the mantle of God is upon you, the anointing of God's upon you, and the wealth of wisdom and revelation you carry 
carry, understanding that this is your season, this is your day, this is your hour. So many of the things you went through were up for preparation. The preparations were not wasted things. The preparations that took place for, were for you to understand that God was going to enlarge the capacity of your heart to be able to do and go further than you ever dreamed of, accomplish more in less time than you ever seen anyone else do. So don't, don't evaluate yourself with another human being. Understand there's one who sits on the throne. There's one at the right hand of the Father. There's the one who's ever living making intercession for you, Pastor. He's up there, and he has got your back. He's got you covered, and he's going to help you to go through so that things that used to distract you, things that used to hinder you, and demons and devils that try to try to take you out even out of the ministry, understand there's an authority being given to you even right now as I speak to you. The authority's going to rise up. The anointing's going to increase, and the capacity that you've carried in the past is going to be is going to increase of the capacity of your heart because your heart's been right and it's been directed towards the will and call and purposes of God and you've come to the place where you're not living any longer but it's Christ who's living in you and that anointing that you carry is stronger than any devil you ever come up against so don't ever be ashamed of the mantle and the call and the purposes and the wealth of resources that you carry because many will be touched through your your ministry, sir. You, you got the best ties in the whole planet. Father, I bless this couple in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, for the things that you have brought them into for such a time as this. The revelation that you've deposited within them. The wealth of wisdom that you've given them as a young couple. For, for just the, even the increase that I've seen in the times I've been in and out of here and experienced your presence and your power and your anointing. But Father, the wealth of the revelation, the wealth, Lord God, of that which they have, have received by you, by, by, by their intimacy for you and by their hearts that have been enlarged by the capacity of allowing you to do in them what needed to be done. Father, I give you praise right now. I I bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, that you will show yourself strong to them. And Lord God, there'll be extreme increase in the name of Jesus because their hearts have been tenderized before your presence. And Lord God, you insert you insert a greater wealth of, rev of revenue to them in the name of Jesus that you bring them into a place, into that secret place of greater strength, greater ability than they ever knew was possible. Lord, you take them into the dreams of the Spirit. Take them into the revelations that are needed. Take them into the places in which you're calling them to because there's a higher plane and a higher place because of the mantle of the anointing in which you carry. Don't underestimate that grace that is upon your life. Don't underestimate the covenant that you've made with the Lord and don't ever underestimate the power of the resurrected one who lives in the inside of you for he will bring you from what you've been distracted to in the past into a place of absolute freedom and liberty to be able to do that what he's placed in your heart so don't 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 doubt but to learn how to shout more and more and more and as you shout you'll shout your way into the doors into the into the wealth into the resources and into the perfect will of God say it the spirit of grace Let's just pray in the Spirit, church. Pray in the Holy Ghost. This is an international church, and you might as well get used to the way things go on in other nations. Understand, understand this house is going to touch the nations to a greater impact than what they have in the past because the increase of the presence, the increase of the power, the increase of the revelation, 
said, the increase of the heart capacity has been enlarged, for there's other new places that are going to open up. There's new doors, but there's also new resources coming. There's greater favor coming. I see, I see, I see a, a, a vast amount of what I believe is the wealth that will be needed to be distributed to cause more of the capacity to bring in the harvest that is needed throughout nations. I don't, 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 the Church of the Word, don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit upon the house of God in which he birthed up out of a, out of a nowhere place and he birthed it up and, and it put it into the hearts of man and understand that was a work of God. That was not a work of the flesh. I know that, that Pastor Jay has gone through some things where it would have been easier to quit. But see, God don't bless quitters. He blesses those that will keep getting up and saying, you know what? There's no quit in this boy. There's no, no quit in this girl. So when you set your heart to say, God, I'm going to serve you with all my heart, all my soul, and all my might, and I'm going to be obedient to your will and your call, and I'm not looking back. I'm going forward because I'm going to look unto Jesus, who is still the author and the finisher of this faith. Understand, you got the faith of God, church, each and every one of you. You got mountain moving faith inside of you. You got what it takes to get the job done. Don't underestimate the anointing you carry as a men and women of God. Don't underestimate that what God has placed inside of you. There's gifts here that the Spirit of God is going to stir up even in these next few days. Understanding that the gift of faith is going to start operating in this house to a degree that you've never seen before. I believe that there's healing, the healing of God. The hand, the, there's hands in here that are going to start understanding those hands are healing hands and boldness is going to come upon you. I believe there's a capacity of, of, the, of what I believe is... <laughs> It's called the compassion of Jesus Christ. When he moved with compassion, he healed. The compassion level that you've had in the past for humanity and the needs of humanity is rising even tonight in each one of our hearts. And as you move in that compassion, understand your hands are healing hands. Understand there's one who lives in the inside of you, and he doesn't change. He's always the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when he got anointed by the Holy Ghost and power, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Well, that same God that was with him, that raised him up from the dead, understand he lives in inside of you if you're a believer if you've accepted Jesus Christ there's a greater one inside of you Christ in you is the hope of glory understand the Christ that you carry is the anointing that you need to accomplish the will and call and purposes of God that he's placed upon your life each and every one of us hallelujah don't underestimate the call upon your life as being an ambassador of Jesus Christ as being a reflection of the image of Jesus Christ as being his hand his feet, his mouthpiece. Understand, maybe you're not called into a five-fold ministry, but I guarantee you, you got a believer's anointing. There's a believer's anointing that you can go places that prophets can't get into. You can go places that Billy Graham wasn't able to get into. You can go places that, that men and women of God that maybe you've recognized in the past because there is favor upon your life and doors will open up and extreme things because exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think, I is available to you in this day because there's a threshold that the body of Christ has gone into and I believe this is a new era. I believe this is a new day. I believe that you were born for such a time as this. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. God will raise you up to understand the heart of God, to understand the principles of God, to understand to come into a place of the depth of understanding of how the Holy Ghost wants to work in your life and through your life to touch others. Can you say amen? amen? Is there a possibility of getting some water? Anyone? Oh, brother, never mind. Thank you, sir. You're awesome. Y'all okay? I know you are. 
<laughs> Amen. The devil might try to get you to believe something else, but I'm telling you what, you're the church. And Jesus said, I'll build you in the gates of hell. I said, the powers of hell, they won't prevail against you. Do you understand? I mean, thank God for this building, but this building ain't the church. Are you with me? You're the church. You're the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of the living God. You're the one that God put His hands upon and His anointing upon. You're the one He put His passion inside of. You're the one He put His revelation in. You're the one He called out of darkness into light. It wasn't a building. Praise God, there's bigger buildings, and they're going to be available soon, son. I love you. Is it okay if I love you? No matter what you think of me, it don't matter. <laughs> Amen. Somewhere along the process of it, Bob died. <laughs> I'm glad he did because he was a rascal. I know you all were perfect, but I wasn't. So I thank God. That song we were singing. Amen. Hell lost another one. Hallelujah. I want you to know, <laughs> he sure did. <laughs> I'd like you to go to the book of, oh my. I'm going to try to stay on track tonight. I don't know if that's going to work or not, but I'll do my very best. Go with me. I, I can't get away from it. I, I, I don't want you to think, well, that... that there's only one scripture that brother knows. Well, sometimes we got to get, allow it by the ministry of the Holy Spirit to get from here to here so we actually grasp it and believe it. And it's not just, well, I, I memorized that scripture. Well, that's great. But is that scripture living inside of you? Are you with me? See, that comes by meditation. That comes by allowing the Holy Spirit, who is the best teacher, to give you true revelation of what that Scripture is saying to you, whether it's a passage of Scripture, a book, uh, through the Bible, or whether it's at one of the Psalms. But in this, in this case, it was Jeremiah 29, 11, which you know, you know, and I'm not trying to bore you, but we're going to read it again. It says here in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace. Say shalom. Say peace that passes understanding. Peace in the midst of the war. Peace in the midst of troubles and tribulations. Peace, perfect peace, belongs to you and me because our minds are fixed on Him. In other words, in the world you will, I, it would be lying to you to tell you not because Jesus already said it, in the world you'll have tribulation. You're going to have trials. You're going to have to deal with devils. You're going to have to deal with things that, it, it, you understand, there are still some Goliaths in the land and they need to be slain by some Davids just like you. Understanding that you have what it takes to slay the giant. You have what it takes to, to, to get to victory. You have what it takes to walk in victory, every one of us. Don't think, well, that's just for preachers. No, that's for the body of Christ. Understanding that that peace in the midst of trouble and tribulation and what's taking place in our world, what's taking place in our nation, understand you can live in the kingdom of God in the midst of everything that's going on in what I believe is the last days. He's coming back, my brother and sister, and you got to be ready. And you got a job the same way I have a job. How many people can we help equip to be ready for when that sky cracks, when He arises, when the dead in Christ come up, when we which are alive are, are caught up together with Him to meet Him in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But understand, the Lord is already with you. Is that right? Huh. So you've already stepped into eternity. You've already, if you're a believer, you've already been crucified with Christ. It's not you that's living any longer. And when you settle that issue, I guarantee you, you'll go through what I believe a place of peace 
in the midst of every battle so that the devil cannot get you anxious because you don't need to be anxious for anything. You don't need to be worried about a thing. Oh, you don't know what I'm dealing with. Well, I guarantee you, I know one who does know what you're dealing with. And I know one who already paid the price. I know one who already spoiled principalities and powers. He made a rule of them openly. He triumphed over them in it. I know one who, who hell couldn't keep them. I know one who God sent the Holy Ghost and raised him up out of that place. Are you understanding? His name is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the one we call our Savior. But he is still the King of kings kings and the Lord of lords and if he's the king of kings that means you're a king amen Amen. you got a kingly anointing my brother and sister so don't act like well I'm just an old worm you you might have used to be but you ain't no more you be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus you are the new creations of this day of this hour you're the ones that never was before but God has birthed new life in you so you're the children of the most high God you're you're the body of Christ who God set in the earth he's the head of this body and understand when you give your heart and will to him he'll give you his heart and his will and when you understand that you're going to find out that there's a race before you there's a goal before you there's step footsteps for each and every one of you you all you got to do is one step at a time you don't have to get anxious about it you don't have to run you just need to walk in the spirit and walk in the spirit and walk in the spirit and walk in willingness and obedience to him and as you walk in willingness and obedience to him you're going to find out that this an awesome ride you're going to find out that you're living underneath the shadow of the almighty that you're saying to the lord he is your rock and your refuge your fortress and your god in him you're trusting you're going to find out that there's angels and he's given charge over you to protect you and keep you in all your ways you're going to find out that no weapon formed against you can prosper every tongue that rises against you in judgment you can condemn because you're 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 more than the servants of god you are the family of god you're the sons and daughters of god you're the body of christ God has put a mantle upon you and he has chosen you and he thinks you're pretty hot stuff so don't let anybody else don't let religion tell you different don't let the devil tell you different and don't let people tell you different because I said God said I'm absolutely head over heels in love with my church hallelujah can you shout amen Amen. did you find Ephesians 5. Probably nobody told you to go there, did they, huh? I'm uh, I'm blessed to be with you. Jeremiah 11, 29 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. Another version, it's a today's English, it says this, I alone know the plans I have for you, Plans to bring you prosperity and not disaster. Plans to bring about a future you hope for. I want you to understand in 2 Peter chapter 1, you don't need to go there, but in 2 Peter 1.10, it says, Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. I want to encourage you, every one of us, whether you're called into full-time ministry or whether, you, you understand, don't look at, you know, just the ministry is the only place for the body of Christ. If the body of Christ doesn't affect every mountain of influence, then we're not doing our job. Are you with me? In other words, every, 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 every place on this planet needs to have somebody that is raised up in the power of the Spirit of God to be able to go to bring in the anointing into the corruption, into into the ungodliness, into into the devastating things that the devil's trying to do. So don't think, well, i got to be in the ministry. No, you don't. You need to be the ambassador of Jesus Christ in the position of the grace that he's placed inside of you. And together we can get this thing done. See, all I am is I'm just a mailman. Most of the time, I'm a cheerleader. 
You girls didn't know I was a cheerleader, did you? Huh? <laughs> Why? Because I'm rooting on this great body. Are you with me? This is the greatest thing on planet Earth. I'm never, I've never been a football fan other than I, I played football as a kid. But I want you to know I'm a fan of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm a fan of that what he's a fan for. And I want you to know he's sitting at the right hand of the Father tonight. And he's ever living, making intercession for you so that your faith doesn't fail. Your faith doesn't quit. You don't let the devil distract you and take you out of your groove. Understand, there's a groove for every one of us, and we got to get in our groove. We got to run our race, and we got to get her done. Can you say, man? I want to talk tonight, if he'll let me. I believe he will. Give diligence to make your calling sure. We're all called to be sons of God. We're all called to be joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're all called to be believers. We're all called to know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His suffering. We're all called to live by faith it might look different in your life than it does somebody else's. You're all called to trust Him with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Every one of us are called to acknowledge Him so that He can direct our pathway. If you're directing your own pathway, you're headed down the wrong road. And I'm here to help you to get on the right road because I need you in the right race. I need you going towards the right goal because I don't know how much time we have left. Do you understand me? And if, 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 I, if I don't live to see it, I believe that there's probably some young people in here that will. And I want to do my part to help them be equipped so that we can do our part. Because there's a harvest that needs to come in out of the darkness into the light. There's still a commission. It's not called the Great Suggestion. It's called the Great Commission. And it's still go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that what? Believe. In other words, those signs will follow the believer, and that's called the believer's ministry. Can you say amen? That doesn't mean you've got to be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher to walk in the believer's ministry. That means you've got to be a believer. You've got to know Jesus Christ. You've got to have an intimate lifestyle with the Holy Ghost. And you've got to live right before Him so that you understand that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You've got to understand that you're His hands, you're His feet, you're His mouthpiece, and you've got grace to run your race. Because why? He's given you every good thing that you need in, in this life. Those exceedingly great and precious promises that by those you and I can be partakers of His divine nature. The nature and life of God is in the inside of you. And if we just do our own deal, I'm, gonna, I, I just, I'm just here to tell you, you're not going to be in a place of being what I call the perfect will of God. Where Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, in 12 of Romans, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Tonight, I challenge every one of you in the name of Jesus, because you're my family and I love you. And I don't want the devil taking you out. I don't want you to go back into the world I want you to live big and bold and strong in the kingdom of God. I want you to know that you are called to populate heaven and plunder hell. I want you to know that you're a mighty man and woman of God that has an anointing that will break yokes, remove burdens, and set captives free. But when Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, say bodies. See, your body and my body don't belong to us. It belongs to Him. Because there was blood that was shed called the blood of Jesus Christ that He purchased you, He purchased me, He purchased our body and our spirit. They belong to Him. You, that's why you, anybody that does whatever they want to with their bodies is headed down the wrong road. They're going to get themselves in trouble. Are you with me? 
That's why you're going to find out that people that do goofy things with their body end up demon-possessed because they open a door for devils to join them. Well, I want you to know you don't need to have any devils in your life. Can you shout amen? Amen. I hope I'm speaking the right message because why? I don't want to hold back what God has for you because I believe, I believe that God's going to raise this house up in demonstration and power and they're not going to be ashamed of the name neither of the gospel and going forth and doing what needs to be done to accomplish that what God has placed a mantle of his presence and the power and anointing and revelation upon. Can you say amen? So, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. I can't present your body. You can't present mine. Only I can. It didn't say dead. It said alive. Living. Well, the kind of living you want to live is you want to allow the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to live inside of you. Not the old man not the old nature, not the fleshly desires, no, the life and nature of God, to live your life in the life and nature of God, the zoe of God, and understanding when you do that, you understand that He wants your mind. Pastor said a, a phrase like this, that he, he told you and me that he, he lost his marbles, is that the word you use? He lost his mind, but he he got the mind of Christ. Are you with me? Aren't you glad the pastor has the mind of Christ? And these other pastors, they have the mind of Christ. They lost their mind. Well, these guys are crazy. No, no. They have, they have the best thing going. They got the mind of Christ. Could you say amen? So understanding that we have the mind of Christ, we might have, but see, a lot of people don't lose their mind. In other words, what I mean by that is they don't allow their minds to be programmed, to be deleted with the bad info they have or maybe some of the, the traditions that they've carried throughout their life, whatever it might be, where Paul says, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can know what is the good acceptable and perfect will of God. And I want to point you towards the highest goal, and that's the perfect will of God in your life. And the way you find that is step by step of obedience to the Word of God and by the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. You might not get there tomorrow morning. Don't get impatient in this thing. It's through faith and patience you inherit the promise. Are you with me? God's not McDonald's, just in case you were wondering, all right? He's not Santa Claus either. Do you understand me? He's the God of the universe, the God of creation. He is the ultimate. He is the all in all. Hallelujah. And when He's working in our lives He's, he has to work with what we give him. <laughs> and if I don't give him my body, I'm in trouble. If I don't allow him to take my mind and transform my thinking according to his word, I'll get in trouble. And you too. See, that's where it comes down to my will. I got to give my will up for his will to be performed through me. Your soul man, say my soul man, you're a triune being. You understand that your spirit, which when you're born again, your spirit becomes alive unto God, all right? You have a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions, your personality. It's the you we get to know when we get to know each other. It can be the goofy you. I'm the only goofy one in here, right? All right. Now, John is too. And what I mean, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just we all have our quirks in our personalities. 
You understand? There's things we love and there's things we don't love. There's, there's, you know, there's humor that we think's funny, and then there's humor that you might frown upon. So, those things in our mind, our will, our our emotions, need to be fixed. <laughs> And that's why it's one step at a time. That's why when we allow the Word of God to come into our life, which is alive, quick, powerful, active, it penetrates, it pierces, it splits up spirit, soul, and body, and it goes right into the heart so that your heart can be exposed to Him and your eyes can be opened up to actually see what's in your heart. Are you with me? So in in seeing this, I want you to understand that when you allow this Word to come into you on a daily basis, and you're not going to be one of those people that, I just heard it, sounded good, good. You know, that's like going up to to Pastor Ron and saying, Ron, Pastor, that was an awesome message, praise the Lord, and then going out there and doing totally contrary to what he preached. I I know none of your congregation ever did that. Right? (laughs) Amen. I love that, brother. (laughs) What I want you to see here is we got to be doers, not just hearers. And who has to make up their mind to do that for you? I got a very strong willed wife. Now, I know none of you ladies are that way, right? Amen. The guys are like, you don't know, brother. (laughs) But what I'm saying, and I'm glad. I'm very glad because, but she can't make me do it. Nobody on this planet can make me do the Word. I've got to give my will over to do the will of God when it comes to the truth. And you do too. You have a choice. And what I'm trying to get you to see, and I know that, you know, maybe I, this is very redundant to most of you, and I, I hope not. I'm not here to bore you. I'm not here to waste your time. I just see, there's things I get to see. He just takes me to the show, and I get to see things, and it's like, all right, Lord, how do we get your people there? <laughs> well, it's line upon line, precept upon precept, one step at a time, and you're going to get to your destinations. But if you want to get there quicker, you allow your heart to be totally exposed and totally open to the truth, and then you set your will to His will, so it's not your will being done, it's His will being done, and you're going to find out that His will is right here in these Scriptures. All right, And then the details of the perfect will for you will come in your relationship with Him. And all of a sudden, you'll find out, well, I'm called into business, or I'm called into ministry, or I'm called to be an educator, or I'm called into, into the political world, or you, you understand me, I'm, I'm called into the arts and the media. I, whatever, whatever that is that He puts you into, it comes through the intimacy of your relationship with Him because you've allowed your mind to be transformed transformed by the renewing of the Word of God, and all of a sudden, you've got the thoughts of God. See, He's got thoughts for you. He's got plans for you. He's got purposes for you. The thing of it is, is if we don't go through the process, we don't know what His thoughts are for us. We don't know what His plans are for us. And we don't know what His purposes are for us. In other words, you and I have the ability, I hate to tell you guys this, I don't like to be a negative preacher, but we do, every one of us in here, have the ability to be clueless. Does they use that terminology in Colorado? I, I know they do in Pennsylvania. You've probably experienced that, brother. You know, because why? I, I walked around clueless for a lot of years till I found out that I got a computer that needs deleted and I need to reprogram it. And I found out what to reprogram it with. It's called the washing of the water of the Word. It's called the entrance of His Word gives me light. It's called the living, active power of God in the Word of God coming into my heart because faith always comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And when I allow that to come, all of a sudden I become as a different person. Why? Because my thinking has changed into allowing the mind of Christ to possess me. Are, are we on the same page here? So,
Say this with me before we go on. How That clock is way too fast. I know it is. Slow that down, would you? So you guys have a little... Say this. Heavenly Father, my heart belongs to you. And it's open to all you want to do. You got total access an entrance into all of my heart. That's not going to ever change because I'm going to allow that to take place every day. Now, you just made a, a, a crazy confession whether you know it, all right? Now, the next one is, Father, I thank you. I have the mind of Christ. So, therefore, I lay down my will, my emotions, my feelings, I give you even my circumstances. Here, have my personality while you're at it. Now, I'm asking you, you have the right mind for me. You have the right personality for me. You've got the right gifts for me. You've got the right makeup for me. You've got everything I need. So I'm coming to you tonight. I'm asking you to help me to be reprogrammed into the man of God, into the woman of God, ladies. Men, you didn't have to say that, all right? I'm just, I'm a cheerleader, all right? So what I'm saying is I, I've, I've got to allow him by my fellowship with him. Parts of it take place in churches, services. But I guarantee you the biggest part takes place on a one-on-one -on -one basis with you and at the feet in a relationship that is real and genuine with the one who loves you more than most of us will ever understand. Who wants to raise you up to reflect His image brighter and brighter every day. These, some of these changes don't happen overnight. You know, I'd like to lay hands on all of you and all of a sudden a transformation would take place and you'd be perfect to run your race. No, it's a work. It's as we open up, we take in, the entrance of His Word comes, and He gives you light. The light shines, and it'll become brighter and brighter and brighter as you run your race. In other words, what you need next year might not be available to you right now because you're not ready for what is coming next year. But you can get prepared for what comes ahead next year by being obedient in your relationship, allowing the Word to be able to bring the correction that you need. Uh, we all need it. And to correct us because why? He chastises those He loves. I know you young people are like, I don't know if my dad and mom love me. They're all the time getting on me or they're all the time correcting me. Well, that's because they love you. Well, i got a Heavenly Father that loves me, and I'll tell you what, there's times I take a beating. And that's not in the natural. It's like the Word comes in, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, you know what? i got some stinking thinking i got a bad attitude. I need to deal with that. I need to forgive that person. I need to let that go. I, I, need to, I, I know I'm the only one in here that deals with that. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I knew I could count on you, young man. I knew it. But see, you and I have flesh. As long as you have flesh, you're going to have to deal with it. And the more you allow the Word of God access into your life, and you just don't listen to it, you actually do what it's saying, you're going to find out there's going to be a transformation take place in you, and the lights are going to come on, and you're going to know the grace in your life, you're going to know the call in your life, you're going to start understanding His divine purposes and intentions for you individually and then when a church gets together and they come into harmony together, they're going to find out that they're a force on the earth where the gates of hell cannot stop them. Because why? They're moving forward 
And what I believe is a spirit of unity, because why? How can two walk together unless they agree? And in Psalm 133, it says, there, that place of unity, is where God commanded the blessing of life forevermore. And that belongs in a household, that belongs in a marriage, that belongs in a, in a family, but it belongs in a church. I've gone to meddling now, haven't I? I can't believe some of the stupid things the pastor's doing right now. Did you see him? He was dancing up there. I'm embarrassed for him. (laughs) You know what? Learn to keep your mouth shut. (laughs) Boy, this is good preaching tonight. Aren't you glad you came? (laughs) And what I mean by that, with all my heart, sometimes we have opinions and when God has spoken to a man of God especially, or a, has spoken to you, you need to carry out His orders. You need to carry out His will, His way. And people are going to have opinions around you, whether you know it or not. And some of them aren't afraid to express them. And some of them will talk about them behind your back. But understand, no weapon formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment Thou shalt condemn, because this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of God, is of me, he says. In other words, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, in in a congregation that wants unity, and you see the the lead man, in this case is a pastor, get out of get out of sync or you think well he's going down the wrong track I guarantee you put the pressure on him it's not called we got to go to lunch and I got to straighten the pastor out no it's I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to watch the Holy Ghost fix that rascal you understand me he's going to pull the slack out of him and he's going to put him in divine order and that whatever he's up to and we're going to find out that God Almighty is going to show up at his bedchamber and all of a sudden God's going to fix him that's how you get your pastors fixed See, when I I step out of that, I can speak about these things, all right? It's kind of difficult for the pastor to say some of these things, but I'm going to be honest with you. Because why? We're in this together. And I need my quarterback full of the Holy Ghost and power. You understand me? I need my pastor in sync, in line with doctrine, with the Holy Spirit, in agreement with the will and call and purposes of God. I don't need him doing the good. I don't need him doing the acceptable. I want him to go for the gusto because we're going to hit the mark and we're going to get this job done and we're going to go together as one because why? We're the family of God. And I don't need to be critical. I don't need to be judgmental. But I need to be a man of prayer. I need to be one that will lay down before God and say, God, I I don't know what's going on, but Father, I thank you. There's a name that is above every name. So every demon in hell that is trying to distract them, every, every, every influence that is trying to come that is not of you, I take authority in the name of Jesus, and I break the powers of the principalities and powers of rulers of darkness, the spiritual wickedness in high places that is trying to take us out of the will and call and purposes of God in the name of Jesus. See, most of the problem in most churches is because they, they took prayer and they put it off to the side. And then when they come into a problem, they say, oh, I guess we got to pray. It's too late. In most cases, without a miracle. But if you'll learn a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of intimacy, you're going to find out that you'll take problems that never happen because the devil is already taken care of because there's a praying church. There's men and women of God that know how to stand and take care and keep the anointing where it needs to be. There's men and women of God that know how to use the authority that God's given them. There's men and women of God that stand in the gap and make up the hedge and they pray and heaven comes down and visits the sanctuary and lives are changed and marriages are renewed and healing and manifestations of miracles and manifestations of the goodness of God is taking place all the time because there's an open heaven set before the church.
I, I encourage you. I know I'm probably a broken record at times to most of you. If we want to see what belongs to us, we've got to give our hearts over to a level of intercession and prayer and worship and praise and the entrance of His Word beyond what we've done in the past. Oh, I don't want to hear that kind of message. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can just be obedient. And I, I'm not just telling you. Uh, that, that's as much me. I, I have the same stuff you got. It's called flesh. Well, I don't want to do that. Well, that's where i got to slap myself up alongside the head and say, you know what, you're going to do the will of God. You're going to do the right thing. And you will too. Because why? I believe you wouldn't be here tonight if you didn't want God's very best for your life, for your family, for your loved ones, for your community, for your church, for your nation. Can you say amen? Did you find Ephesians 5 yet? I, you, you guys are slow tonight. I'm not, what's going on? Well, I, one day I'm going to get to actually what I have for you. The, the, what the, the message that I had for you this evening was called Yielding to God's Will, okay, individually and then corporately as a church. And then it was yielding to His plans, thoughts, and purposes. And then we kind of hit a little bit on that out of Jeremiah 29, 11. But what I want you to understand is the, the true the if you need a title for this message, brother, it's not even that I've got there, but I'll give you this crazy title anyhow, all right? It's called <clears throat> Alignment for the Assignment. Alignment for the Assignment. In other words, there's assignments on all of our lives, and they all might look different. Because why? We're not cookie-cutter Christians. Or can you say amen? Amen. So understanding that there's alignment in my life individually, there's alignment, holy, uh, what I'm talking about is holy alignment, divine alignment that takes place. And where we started, and, and we've kind of hammered on that, I, I, I feel bad for you, but the Spirit of God wouldn't let me off of it, is understanding my heart has to be prepared to allow that to take place, or it's just going to be words are you with me? Because your heart is the soil in which the Word goes into, and it's the engrafted Word of God that saves your soul, that, that delivers your soul and your thinking and transforms your mind so that you, you, you actually possess the mind of Christ to be able to operate in the mind of Christ to the fullest capacity of your call, of your purpose of God's plans for your life, of His thoughts for your life, of, of His divine purposes and intentions for every one of your lives individually, in a family, and then in a church. Does this make sense to you? So, where do we start? I'm glad you asked me because now I'm just getting started. I'm going to get black paint. I'm going to cover that light up there that shining in my eyes it says 812 my my wife for years and years she and she still you know can't help herself she she's been a she was a, I, I actually call her a children's pastor but she you know has served in, in in the children's ministry and helped others raise them up and we've helped had ability to help churches get children's ministry up to where it's actually effective and we're actually doing helping equip the kids along with the family along with the uh, the congregation and but one thing about it you lock somebody up with small children and then you go into four hour services I guarantee you you better have some techniques to be able to deal with some of those people that have been locked up in usually smaller rooms, all right? And eventually they run out of material and treats and the things that it takes to keep 
children active for that many hours. So somewhere, she said, I, was a, I wasn't a farmer, I was a butcher, a uh, meat cutter, grocer in, in, in my previous life, well, years ago. But I, I dealt with farmers. Uh, I, I, I would cut meat for many of the farmers in the community in which I was in. And one thing, I, I found out that when they feed the cows, they don't give them the whole bale all at once. Is that right, brother? <laughs> you, do you have farming background to some degree? A little bit, all right. But you understand, you give them what they need. Well, I had the tendency, I wanted to throw... You know, in my case, I wanted to give you the whole side of beef tonight. When I've come to the conclusion now that I'm, you know, almost 70 years old, I, I come to the conclusion that uh, you, probably a hamburger or two probably f take care of you, all right? Or maybe a steak or two, or maybe a, you know, a slice of prime rib, or, you, you know, in some of your cases, maybe you don't eat beef and you want a big bag of vegetables. I'm not quite certain. But what I'm saying is, you know, sometimes us preachers want to give you more because our hearts. And, you know, we, we've got to learn this. When, when, when things change and you see the presence in the sanctuary because of, the, of intercession, of worship, of praise, and of the atmosphere of heaven, you can, you can go into five, six-hour services and nobody knows the difference. Brother, I'm, I'm certain you understand. You understand me. I, I've been in enough countries that, you know what, when they go to church, it's, not, it's, a, it's all day. But in America, I've come to the conclusion, it's not all day. <laughs> I want it to be all day. All right? That's my heart. But I've got to come to the conclusion that at 8.30, I'm going to quit. That's what I'm telling you all that for. Because why? I want to give you enough to feed you so that you can chew on what the Spirit of God is saying to you individually and then corporately as churches here to be able to digest it and then utilize it or put it into action. So where do we start? That's where I was at in Ephesians 5. I'm going to read it to you out of the Amplified Version. Verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. As well as beloved children, imitate their father. Is there any kids here that want to be just like your dad? I'm certain there are. You know, I remember uh, my dad had certain mannerisms, and I remember as a young kid, I'd get behind him and I'd start walking the way he walked. He was a baseball player and his knees were all blowed out and he, he kind of had a, a different walk my dad was a big man he he, he could have second for John Wayne he, but look at me you wouldn't believe that would you but <coughs> I didn't get his genes I got my mom's evidently but in the process of it I remember trying to imitate him and I wanted to be like him in certain ways and we as believers have to understand that I'm not here to compare myself with you, your call, your anointing, your purposes. I'm here to look higher because I've got to imitate Him. Are, and you do too. And I, I want to help you change your focus because it will elevate you onto a higher plane so that He can work in your life and reveal things to you of the way He does things instead of the way that maybe the world has done it or the way that other people have done it. Because why? God's got some cool stuff, some plans, some purposes, and some thoughts that He wants to make known to you so you can be all that He's called you to be. Does that make sense? So in this passage of Scripture, He says, be imitators of God, copy Him, and follow His example as well-beloved children imitate their Father. Now, your Bible reading from the night on, I'm going to ask you to start looking at, all right, how's God operate? Holy Spirit, show me how Jesus operated. I want to imitate Him. <laughs> I want to follow His example. So, in, in the New Living Translation, it says it this way. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are His dear children. 
Live a life, verse 2, filled with love. <laughs> well, that'd be it. That'd be something if the church actually did that, wouldn't it? Just look ahead and smile. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered Himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Now here, I'm going to read a, a very modern translation. It's not that I use these translations. It's this. I want to get these thoughts in you as the Holy Spirit brings them to you so that you can practically see it. Because if I can get you to see it, then the next move will be you actually start doing it. Now, I'm not saying you're not doing it to some degree, but I believe there's room for expansion in every one of our lives. Are you with me? See, if I want to walk in the Spirit and I step out of love, I just stepped out of the walk of the Spirit. See, if I, if I let you get offend me and I take offense, I just stepped out of the walk of the Spirit. I, get, you know, I, I can't be in that. I can't allow unforgiveness in my life. Not, not in this day. And you, I'm just telling you the same thing. So I've got to understand, how did Jesus do it? Do you remember when they stretched him out? He made some words like this, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they've done. That is an attitude that you and I have to carry throughout the rest of our life because the devil will try to set you up and to get you offended to get you in a place of, 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 of bitterness and resentment and discouragement. Because why? You've taken an offense or you've gotten in unforgiveness and all of a sudden you've shut down the flow of the life of God in your life. And this is a dangerous time to allow that to happen. I want you to live long, I want you to live strong, and I want you to finish the will and call and purposes of God on every one of your lives. There's no exceptions here. Are you okay with this message? But I guarantee you, I want to, I want, if we're going to shoot for the divine perfect will of God in my individual lives as well as our corporate life, it starts right here. I've got to start imitating Him. As I, as I spend time in His presence, I've got to say, Lord, there's areas of my life that I, I, it's Bob. It's the old man. I, I'm just not aware of it. Open my eyes up. Enlighten my darkness. Bring me into a place where I actually see so that I can shift, I can change, I can be rearranged and be able to do and follow you to be an example of who you are so that the world will see Jesus and not Bob. Are you okay? Now listen to this. This is, this is about as practical as you can get. Watch what God does. And then you will do it like children who learn proper behavior from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. <laughs> Let me read that again. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with Him and learn a life of love. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of Himself to us. Let me read that one more time. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of Himself to us. Love like that. Love like that. When I say you're the ambassadors of this day and this hour, that, that's all of us. You know, whether you're in ministry or whatever, you understand me? We're the ambassadors of this season of to bring the influence of Jesus Christ into our nation, into our society, into our world. And 
one of the attributes is the love of God, when you got born again, was shed abroad in your hearts by the who? The Holy Spirit. Now, because I know I'm talking to mostly Pentecostals here, one way you can stay in a, in a level of what I believe is love, because love never fails. It never fails. And as He is, so are you in this world. He's love. Are you with me? So, my Bible says in Jude, but you, beloved, that's you, that's us, building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And if you look at it in letter form, next verse says, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. When you give that over to Him in His presence, you're going to find out that your love walk will increase the capacity for you to walk in difficult times with difficult people in circumstances that aren't always you know, lined up with all their ducks in a row and everything is hunky-dory, peachy, clicking. Because why? A lot of things aren't in life. You know that. But you can walk in love. And you can bring the presence, the anointing, and the power of heaven down to earth in those situations, that's part of the perfect will of God on all of our lives. Can you say amen? Let me pray for you. Put your, put your hand in the midsection, if you would, if you, if you don't mind. I just, I want you to pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you that your love has been placed inside of me by the Holy Spirit. Let me know your love that's within me so that I can walk in a higher level of the love of Jesus Christ in all that I do, all that I say, everywhere I go, that people would be influenced by the true love of Jesus Christ through my life. Father, I thank You for the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of the love of Jesus Christ that is in me for humanity. Give me practical ways Wisdom, understanding, revelation to be able to walk in this dimension to be able to show the world Jesus Christ. That Christ in me is alive. The anointing of God within me is active, powerful, operative. This anointing that I carry as I walk in the Spirit and I walk in love will bring people to the heart of God out of darkness into light will bring revival bring refreshing will bring heaven into their lives I expect miracles manifestations goodness mercy and most of all, extreme, extravagant love to be released from my breath, from my life, from my actions, from my attitude, from everything that I do in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for each one here. And Lord, I just bless you that they have ears to hear what the Spirit was saying tonight. 
Lord, that your word has gone forth and it will not return unto you void. It will accomplish that which you please and it will prosper in each and every heart here. I thank you, Father, for your blood that covers them, for your grace that's sufficient for them, and for your truth that has touched their hearts tonight. Continually open up the eyes of their understanding. Bring them into the depths of revelation like I've never seen before. Use them to bring this harvest in, in this world in which we got our feet in. But Lord, use us as the ambassadors of heaven sent to earth. And I give you praise for every man, woman, boy, and girl in this house. And Lord, if there's someone here that has never called on the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you right now. We call upon that name that is above every name. Lord, as they believe in their heart that God raised Christ from the dead and they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So Father, I just bless you. I bless you. I bless you right now. Say this with me, every one of you, if you would please. I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. In my heart of hearts, I believe my Father God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ, He is my Lord. So I proclaim His Lordship over my household, over my family, over my life, over my community, over my region, and over my nation. Lord Jesus, be honored, be glorified. If you've never said that Jesus Christ is your Lord until just now, you need to see one of these pastors here. You need to come and let them know that, you know what, I just allowed the King of Glory to come into my heart. I just walked out of darkness into light. I just became born again as a child of God. And if there's anyone in here, no matter what your age is, that says, you know what, I, I'm a believer now. I'm not a doubter. You need to let somebody know that you, that you can trust. Maybe it's just a friend. I just encourage you. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> I, I see two things that uh, I, I want to be obedient to. I'm not here to embarrass anybody. But I have the privilege of having my sister in the congregation. And the Lord just spoke to me that that I would like to pray over you. Um, So if if you want to bring the family up here, we'd like to just, if that's okay with you guys, we'd just like to pray. I'm not trying to be intrusive. I just, I believe by the Holy Spirit there's some things um, I know you're stepping out in faith, and, and there's a big move coming ahead of you, and I want to bless you. You know, as, as, as family goes sometimes, <laughs> we don't, haven't always agreed, have we? <laughs> but it's okay, and I want you to know that, and I, and I know that there's things, Garrett, you've gone through the fire. And, and as a pastor's wife, Julia, you've gone through some things too. And I'm believing for, and I'm not saying that you're holding anything. I'm just believing that by the Holy Spirit, there's going to be a supernatural healing of things that, that you guys have dealt with and gone through that nobody knows. That I don't even know. But you do. And you've gone through. And I believe by the Holy Spirit, when I pray for you guys, that there's just going to be some things that are going to be completely gone. Some of those hurts, some of those wounds, some of those things that when you felt you were stabbed in the back, and they're going to be eradicated. Father, I thank you for Garrett and the man of God that he is. And Father, I thank you that his heart is tender towards you. It's been tender, 
And it's been so tender that at times there's been hurt. And because of that, it's, it, it, at, at times there's been uh, uh, places in him that have questioned things. But Father, I thank you that you're going to restore and make whole everything in the name of Jesus. Things we have no idea about. Things he's gone through. The fire that he's gone through. And because of that fire, there's chaff that's been burned. And Father, I just want to bless him. I want to bless Garrett and Julia and family as they make this move. As they're going to be uh, put in a place that you're going to be able to increase them more and more. Them and their children. That there's going to be an anointing on them to reach the lost. That they're going to have a passion to serve you, Lord. That you're going to give them the fire that maybe um, they have questioned on whether they've had. But you're going to restore it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it is restored to serve you all out. In Jesus' name. I thank you for each one of these amazing children that you've brought into your life because they needed a mom and a dad. And there's not just any couple can take uh, uh, children and adopt them into their family like you have. And the Lord sees that. And he's well pleased. Well pleased. Father, I thank you for my sister Julia. And I just thank you that the anointing is here right now. That as a pastor's wife, there's healing happening right now. Deep cleansing healing. That maybe the people that have spoken against them and come against them, Father, the weapons that were forged in the fire by the enemy, that they no longer exist in the name of Jesus. And I'm honored to be, uh, to be a brother to, to her and, 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 and have a relationship with her and Garrett. And we believe God for all healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. That was an honor. God can restore things. What the canker worm ate, what the locust has destroyed, God can destroy, uh, can, can, what has been destroyed can come be brought back to life. And I am believing that for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And I am privileged to have you as friends and family. And I want you to know that. Second thing I saw, um, I, I, I saw something uh, for you. And um, yes, uh, um, why am I blanking? Um, Sabrina, would you like to come up here, Sabrina? Uh, these two girls, you can stand up also. These two girls um, are part of, of another youth group. And uh, I, I seen something, if you guys are willing for this to happen, to be uh, ambassadors and carriers of the Holy Spirit back to that youth group. And there's going to be a shift and a change. And there's going to become, there's going to be some people that are going to become hungry for the Holy Spirit like you've never seen before. And you're going to carry it. You're going to carry it to them. And there's going to be times they're going to reject you, but there's going to be times they're going to receive it from you. And you're going to be at the right place at the right time. And they're going to receive. And you're going to lead them in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And in the giftings of the Spirit is going to come out of you so that you look at them and you pray for them. And they're going to come to you because their life is a wreck. And they're going to come to you and say, you know what? We need help. We need that Holy Spirit business that you guys keep talking about. And you're going to minister that to them. Is that okay? <sighs> well, I commission you to go preach the gospel. Get them completely, uh, get them saved. Make sure they're saved. Get them filled with the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues. We all rejoice. Glory to God. Amen. You guys carry that. And I want you to know that. We love you here. You guys are precious. But you're carriers of the kingdom of God. And I want I want to see that whole youth group. I want them I want them completely radically changed. People don't go going what in the world happened. And we'll just say Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Well, that's all the Lord showed me, so sorry about the rest of you. But uh, I think that's a good start, and I'm just going to be obedient with what God showed me, and, and, and that's where we're not going to make anything up. So let's stand to our feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for each person tonight as they've received the word. It's gone into their heart. They've opened their heart to you in a greater way that, Father, by the Holy Spirit, you're going to continue to minister to them deeply as they go home, as they lay on their beds. They're going to rejoice. They're going to feel the presence of the Lord on them. And they're going to say, wow, that was amazing. I want more of that. I want more of what that is because the presence of the Lord, the anointing is what breaks the yokes. The anointing is what releases uh, and, and unshackles the chains, releases the plow, however you want to say it. That's what the anointing of the Lord does. And it's going to continue to do that. You're going to wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm more free than I was yesterday. And then Saturday, you're going to be more free than Friday. And Sunday, you're going to be more free than Saturday. And it's going to just continue. And I prophesy that in Jesus' name over you. Hallelujah. You're dismissed. Glory.